Did Donny Cates ruin Venom for me? That is literally the subject of this conversation because we're talking about Venom number one, Ron V. Ron V. Al Ewing, Ewing, kind kind of. of. All right, so let's just get into this. I've chatted with you, Ryan, about doing this book. I don't dislike this comic book. This is going to be an interesting conversation. I'm interested to see what the chat thinks, too. I have to know what the chat thinks because we are talking about this book in particular. Venom number one. We had a legendary run by Sir Cates take place. Multiple issues. I mean, how many issues were there? It was like 50 issues in that run. 2018 or something. It's been a few years. Yeah, 2018 to December of last year. And then we had Venom number one kick off. And we are about four issues in now, five issues into this run. And we have two writers on this, Al Ewing and Ram V. However, it's kind of more uh, Ram V than It's definitely not, so far it is not a 50-50 split. Which I'm I'm disappointed about. More like a 90-10 at this point. So is your, let's talk about the narrative and did Donny Cates ruin Venom for me? Let's, let's get into that next. Let's okay. talk about what actually is going on in this comic book, where we pick off, because a lot of members were a little concerned about their, you know, like whoever took on the run next, just kind of going in a different direction than Sir Kate's brought us on, you know, with Dylan Brock and the King in Black and Eddie Brock being the Lord of the Symbiotes, essentially. It didn't stop, which so I'm, your I, I applaud. Concern was that they would do what Donny Cates actually did with Hulk after taking over Immortal Hulk, and he kind of just ignored a lot of the stuff it's kinda, that Al Ewing did at the end of Immortal Hulk and started his own story. Yeah, this Al Ewing did not do the same thing to Donny Cates, which is a weird. It's weird that it's about both of these same writers, but they carried over a lot of the the leftover stuff from the end of the last Venom run, which is always appreciated. Let's let's uh, you know, in preparation for this here today. I reread all of Donny Cates' Venom because I Commitment. couldn't, I had to. I, I read, like, I, I read issue one of Venom, the the, the Ram V, and then we also read issue two. And then I'm like, oh, I guess I got to see what what is it that I'm not getting from this run that I was getting from the last run? Because I don't dislike this comic, but there's something missing. And hot damn was Sir Cates' run on Venom good. That's all I could, that's what I, like, oh yeah, okay, that's all it was. It's like every damn issue was just, was so damn good that, it soured the taste for other Venom comics. I, I want the absolute carnage. I want the Venom Island again. I want Dylan Brock. I want uh, the maker and all these just outstanding places that Donny Cates took us on in Venom. I want that here. And we're four or five issues into Venom 1. And yeah, we're getting more progression in Dylan Brock. That's great, but we're not getting a whole lot of Eddie Brock. And I think that may be coming, but let's like, let's catch him up. What's going on? At least in this first issue, the groundwork is set up that Dylan Brock is on planet Earth. Eddie Brock is in outer space. That's right. And we have Rom V writing the Dylan Brock Earthbound stuff. Al Ewing writing the Eddie Brock trippy space stuff, which you can see here. Eddie Brock is the Lord of the Symbiotes. He's all places at once. He's controlling all of them to a certain degree. He can see and experiencing their past, their future. The dude can even time travel now because of this yeah. craziness. But we haven't really explored a lot of this because... No, you just get a taste of it, this Ryan. Is, this in the is first... only featured in the first issue because the following issues are heavily focused on Dylan Brock's Earthbound story. That's right. And it's not bad. I like reading about Dylan. You know, this is something I was actually hoping Donnie would do more of. I wasn't, I didn't have a problem with it because the, the Venom run he did was so great, but we are getting kind of Dylan's focus that I think he was, that we were expecting to get maybe even last year. And we're getting it more now by a different writer. He's in school. He's getting into fights. You know, he's got sleeper, which is one of my favorite parts of this book. I really wanted to bond with Sleeper. I thought that would be really cool, but... It'll happen. You think it'll happen? Oh, yeah. He's bonded with Venom, though, so who knows? And yeah. the way you can tell that um, it's Venom, that it's Dylan Venom, is that he's got chains around his wrists. Shout out... Very 90s. Todd McFarlane. But we do have um, something larger taking place that Eddie has to deal with, you know? Kang's getting involved. We have... Something going on in the future, but we don't know. There's a lot of Did you grab questions. that page? There's a page where he, like, explores. Yeah, here we go. There we go. This is him kind of learning that he can see in the future. 
That's right. But he, this is his first attempt at doing this, and he immediately realizes, I'm going, this is way too much. I, I should pull out of this. This is scary. Well, he's and realizing we that he could at any point with, with just like too much thought in one direction transport himself into a different point of time. And he kind of like lets loose with that because he's trying to figure things out. And what he sees in the future is this, this chaos. Kind of a tease of things to come. I like that you could see something that comes at the end of this very issue where this guy in the helicopter finds Dylan. That was a, that was a nice kind of proof that this is actually going to happen. The artwork in here is done by Brian Hitch also. I have to point out. Now, you're not a big fan of, of I, Hitch's work. Now, is that because of the Green Lantern stuff that he did? There were some variant covers he did recently for Green Lantern that I wasn't the biggest fan of. Um, I don't know. I think... See, again, is this is this in reverse now? You've talked is, about how you missed Donnie I miss Donnie. Is it you missing Ryan Stegman? I really miss Ryan Stegman drawing this. That's video. what it is, right? Like, something... I, I, this isn't bad artwork by, by, any, by any definition, but... No, I it's love, beautiful. I mean, it's great. It's just, I love the, not the Ryan. way, the feel of, of Ryan Stegman's symbiote in particular had this goopy, stretchy, rubbery feeling to it. You could, you, could, you could see what it feels like. And Brian Hitch's artwork feels a little two-dimensional and flat to me. I want to see where we're going with Eddie more than anything. Right. And I think maybe had that happened sooner, be, be before our review or conversation about this, maybe my opinions would be a little different. Maybe I'd be more hyped about this run. I'm still reading it. I'm reading every issue. It's I'm a- in for the long haul, you know. It's a formatting thing. I think the first issue, unfortunately, decided to roughly split in half. Half of the book was about Dylan. Half of it was about Eddie Brock. See, and I would have liked that. Right. I thought that that's how they were going to do every single issue. You know, Al Ewing taking care of the Eddie stuff. Rom V taking care of the Dylan Brock stuff. We get a little bit of both every single issue. But no, Eddie's kind of like barely there. And we're getting a Dylan Brock narrative. That's great. But the Dylan Brock narrative is like... I mean, we just had this huge null event. Symbiotes right. everywhere. You can't, you can't be defeat null. Maybe that's why they're like, dialing it back a bit and like saying, let's get something a little more grounded, a little more but, earthbound, a little more personal. But more grounded is like. turned into like the government trying to take out symbiotes again. And it's like, right. oh, we need a symbiote nullifier gun. And now it makes it so symbiotes are like kind of easy to take on. And it's like, yo, we were just like, these are like the most lethal things we were talking about. Two months ago. And they're bringing all this life protecting, you know, the, what is it? The life foundation the stuff life from, the, from the lethal protector run. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, doing, they're doing a lot of callbacks. And Which isn't bad. Again, I'm not upset. I'm just. It's different. Uh, it's different. And I miss Sir Kate's on the run. I'm excited to read Hulk. Maybe I'm going to say the same thing about Donny Cates. That would be so funny. Have you not read Hulk yet? I've only read the first issue. Okay. First two issues. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to three. So you're not. You're not yeah. I got to. I got to catch up. It's interesting. I'll say that much. But I think if. If this if this Venom story had done this half and half Dylan half Eddie all the way through, I think we'd have a, a different a I different comic different. book. And it looks like the second I'm assuming the second story arc is going to pick up more of the Eddie Brock stuff and less of the Dylan stuff. Do you think uh, Rama and Al are going to switch off? It's like they're taking turns, you know, swapping out writing, which is usually what you see when they swap out artists because it's sure. much harder to draw a book than it is to to write one. Really true, true, true. Comic fam, what do you think about Venom? Is is am I off here? Is Tom it, it, off? Am I off? Am, am I? Is this analysis like I just I'm not, I haven't read this closely enough or something, but it's just not gripping me in the way that the last run did. But I'm in it. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it all, and, I, and I'm hyped about it. I I, I I really like the setup that Eddie Brock has, and I think that's what a lot of people shared at the end of King and Black. You know, like oh man, this is different. Eddie is not bonded with the symbiote anymore. Dylan's dealing with his stuff. Venom's de- we have. Multiple narratives. We have Dylan, we have Venom, and we have Eddie Brock written by two different writers. And now time displacement, we have like some stuff happening in the future, some stuff happening in the past. Like that's a lot of fun ideas that are all being developed. So that's why I'm in it. For it's the like they haul. threw all of this at us in issue one and then they kind of pulled a bunch of it away from us and said, not yet. You can't, nope. you can't get that We're yet. going to We're high gonna... school and Dylan's going to get beat up. Yeah. You know, All right. well, I got beat up in high school, man. I know, what <laughs> I like. know what it's like. I don't like it. Mom, I don't want to read it anymore. <laughs> I want to do my homework. Starting the auction off at $1 for one minute. Like we always do. This is one of our favorite covers and you got it. A little bit of that, what y'all been looking for, right? A little bit of that, but what y'all been looking for, right? 